Welcome back to this series of time-saving tips with the goal of giving you maximum efficiency with your E4D restorations. Now, in a previous episode, we looked at polishing in conjunction with crystallization. In this episode, we're going to separate that out and look at polishing and surface characterization uh, individually or separately. Now, the scenario would be that we're going to do either a bread and butter posterior restoration and we're using, say, Empress CAD HT or perhaps Lava Ultimate, uh, or we're doing an anterior restoration and we've decided to use, say, Empress CAD Multi in order to get that nice chromatic gradient in our restoration. And yet, we don't need to stain and glaze. We certainly cannot fire uh, Lava Ultimate, and yet we may want to do a little surface characterization and polish. So the question is, how do we do that efficiently? So let's take a look at uh, some techniques that we may want to consider. Now first, let me just say this. Uh, you know, there are lots of different polishing instruments out there on the market, and the, the trap is we might end up using too many of them. So I'm going to show you my normal armamentarium for characterizing texturing and polishing E4D restorations. I'm going to take all of that off my table and all I need is that burr, that wheel, this is a, um, by the way, this is a Robinson bristle brush. We're going to need some sort of polisher, perhaps. Uh, this is a coarse diamond impregnated polishing wheel. And we're going to need some plasticized diamond polishing paste. This happens to be diasheen. It's a very good material. So that's all I need to do all of my characterization uh, and also, or excuse me, surface characterization and polishing. So we've got our Empress CAD multi restoration right there that we're going to work with today. And let's go to town. So first step, let me zoom in a little bit for you here. There we go. First step, break that off the uh, block. And then we're going to grab our polishing wheel, or excuse me, my burr. So round in cylinder burr, lab burr. And I'm going to remove the sprue. Now removing the sprue is quite simple. and fast. And we want to get that down. Now imagine if this sprue was on the interproximal. A lot of times people get concerned about that, but take a look at the work that I've done thus far. I can very clearly see an outline of a sprue, can I? So what we're going to look for whenever we're removing a sprue, especially if we're worried about an interproximal, is whether or not we've gotten past the sprue and down onto the surface of the restoration itself. And as we continue to remove, we're going to see this change in shape from a uh, rectangle to an oval. And it's already beginning to change now, so I know I'm getting close. And if I go just a little bit further, we're going to see that really begin to broaden out and become more of an oval. I know that I've removed that sprue at this point, and I'm ready to move forward. Okay, so now I've removed my sprue. What about surface characteristics? And by the way, I want to give uh, kudos to Lee Culp for teaching me this. Uh, this is not uh, anything original, um, at least to me. And uh, Lee is a wonderful educator, and uh, he showed me this technique. I really only want to do three things. I want to create mammaline depressions. And so in order to do that, of course, we could do straight lines. Uh, but, you know, mammalines aren't straight or completely symmetrical in nature. So what we want to do is we want to feather those out a little bit and make them a little uneven in length. Uh, and so that's the, uh, the area that I'm going to work in. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to first apply a little light pressure with my burr in this direction and here and here, where that first line is on each of those uh, mammal lines. A little light pressure and just roll it down the restoration like that. Okay. And then I want to fan that out in the V-shape that we saw a moment ago. I'm going to wiggle that back and forth and fan that out a little bit. Okay. 
Now, that's still too distinct, so I definitely want to soften that a little bit just by rolling back over my restoration in that area. Okay? If ever you wonder whether or not you've got what you need, uh, take a little glycerin or water and just paint that on there, and you'll be able to see much more clearly what your uh, surface characterization looks like there. Okay. Okay. Step two is to create mammalon, or excuse me, perichromata growth lines, and we know that those are going to be in the cervical one third down in this area. And so what I want to do is take my burr and turn it at about a 30 degree angle and just roll it across this area. Roll it across the cervical, very little if any pressure, like that. Okay, last step, if I want to create more irregularity, I can just tap on the surface of the restoration in some of the areas in the incisal. And that's all the surface characterization that I need to do. Okay, so next step is to polish the restoration. So we're going to use this polishing wheel, or bristle brush, if you will. And some diamond impregnated polishing paste. Now the secret here is to apply lots of pressure. So I'm going to load my brush first. This is the, the same technique that I use for posterior and anterior. And whenever I go to do this, I'm going to apply quite a bit of pressure. I'm really bearing down. You can see that those bristles are really deflecting whenever I'm doing this. Look at that. That's really coming to life, isn't it? It does get quite warm, but you can see in a very short period of time, I can get a beautiful, beautiful surface. Now, granted, I've got to do a little bit more work on that, but I just wanted to show you the, the high points. Very simple polishing technique, uh, quick and easy to do, uh, in and out in about two to five minutes, and now we're ready to go through our bonding process, uh, and we'll look at that in a future webinar. Happy milling.